Hey everybody, I'm Brian Johnson. I'm the props master, props designer for the Tulsa Opera. I, uh, I got started in all this when I was five years old, actually doing magic. Um, then I got to see David Copperfield perform live when I was seven. And I realized that magic, 15 years later, um, I was on a plane to work for Blue Man Group. And just like that, we are in my, my workshop or my mad science laboratory or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a piece I actually just made for The Little Prince, which uh, you can see on February 15th. Um, this is an adding machine. Um, this is inspired by a Victor adding machine from the 1930s. This is made out of a, a gift box for a picture frame. Uh, a little bit of wood. These are golf tees. And this is actually Pellon, which they use to shape uh, gowns and dresses and things like that, uh, you know, uh, collars. There's this detail here because I know it's there and the performer needs to know it's there. It's so much easier for the performer to believe the illusion that they're creating um, if, if they can see it, if it's tactile. Um, and, now, and now you know it's there. This is another piece for the show. Um, th and th this is a good example too. Not, not always do we build from scratch. Um, this is a piece that's lived with the uh, production for some time, uh, but I'm going to redesign how it works. So it will still look this way. This is a star, and this is really inspired from the original book. Um, but you know, the way it was originally designed is, is it, it to be worn on a hand, and it's kind of an outdated uh, circuitry inside. So I'm going to re repurpose this to work for our production. This here, this is a candlestick telephone that I built for a production of uh, Cabaret. We had a very small budget um, and uh, we needed 10 of these. So what we ended up doing was, e even, even replicas at the time were $100 a piece. Um, so that was not an option. So this is actually made out of a, uh, of a clock face. Um, this is an actual candlestick, which I'm kind of proud of. I didn't really know that in the moment. I wish I could say that was a choice, but. Um, a little bit of wood, and this, and, uh, this is PVC pipe, um, some cane tips, and then this is a, a little cup that you would get a side of ranch in or something like that. It's about learning to think in layers and to repurpose items for other uh, uses. For instance, this lovely pit plate of fudge brownies, if you like one, they're delicious. Um, this is actually a, a dish sponge and this is actually coated in um, a spackle, and then it's actually tinted with some paint, and then amber shellac on top it makes this look like fudge. And uh, it looks super delicious. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't eat it. Uh, this is for a production of, uh, for the Tulsa Opera of Tosca. So I wanted this to be, to look wet like oil paint. Um, so I did some research, and so this is an actual artist palette uh, but this is Bondo, so that it's, it's not wet at all, but it looks all, it has, it has some relief to it. Um, it has some gloss to it, so that they could really handle this um, and not make a mess, which performers like to do. So it's nice to have stuff like that. This is a great example. So we need, um, the, the director has requested a, a camera. Uh, it has to be a certain period, so 1950s Italian. Um, so this is what I started with, based on photo references sent to me by the director. Um, and it's great. I figured I, I can make this flash. It, it, of course, needed to flash. But it needs to flash multiple times without changing the bulb. So I started designing that. Um, and then it's brought to my attention that the performer needs to then rip out the film to destroy it. So in order to do that with this, this has to happen. Well, as a performer who's also singing, this is too much. And to try to tear out film. So while this looked right, um, it, it, it's not going to work for our purposes. So this went away. And then we went to this, this style. Again, in the same period, we knew we wanted this reflector. Um, so again, this would open up. And as you can see, there's not a lot of real estate in there to make the magic happen. So. Finally, we, went, we found this, and this is going to work. Um, this, will, this, is, this is the viewfinder. Um, it's really hard to take selfies on these. Um, 
But so this is the camera we're actually modifying, same thing. I had to buy a second one so they have one to rehearse with. And this one will be rigged to um, a nine volt battery. Um, so this is actually a um, 3000 lumen LED reverse light for a, a car. And so he'll, he'll be able to, to truly fire this and make the flash go off. And this, I don't know how this is picking up, but this is actually really, really bright. That's a little sneak peek into the, the prop shop. Um, thank you guys for coming and checking it out. And come see Little Prince February 15th. All right, so welcome to what I call my, my nerdery. This is my personal collection of props. Some are screen used, some are replicas. These are the films from my childhood that really inspired me to get into props. Um, I was a big fan of Jim Henson, um, Walt Disney, um, and really a lot of the movies from the 80s. Primarily Ghostbusters was my biggest. This, we'll go ahead and address the, the big green elephant in the room here. Um, this is Slimer. He's, this is a life-size what the actual puppet would have looked like. Over this way, we have, uh, we have a proton pack, we have terror dogs, um, we have a bunch of smaller props. Um, I love detail, you know, working in props, uh, details are key. Uh, so even down to probably my most watched movie scene ever is when their receptionist, Janine, yells, we got one, and slams that button on the table. And so I did the research on the, what their prop department used and it's a pneumatic oil filler button that actually they stopped making in 1993. And their props department glued it onto a retractable clothesline, <laughs> and so, which they still make. So I was able to actually recreate that, but I wanted to use the right parts. This is my Audrey II, um, some amazing Freddy Krueger pieces, the glove, um, a Mogwai which you can't get wet. Don't feed this after midnight. Uh, my Rocketeer, my Robocop, my Gremlin. Um, again, just the movies that spoke to me at a young age that really said, this is, this is the industry that I want to go into. Some Jurassic Park pieces over here. Um, this is an actual piece of screen used chain from, from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, this is a screen used burned bill from The Dark Knight. Uh, that Heath Ledger burned a pile of money. Um, a bunch of other kind of 80s movies down below. We've got Labyrinth, Never Ending Story, The Grinch. Uh, this is an, an actual big bird feather, uh, which is hand dyed a certain way for Jim Henson. Um, it's, it's actually like a, like a turkey feather. It's not just about having a collection, it's about art directing it. And so I really wanted, you know, for people to be able to come in here see what spoke to me as a young props artist um, and then but also tell a story right here in the cabinets.